Hi, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts, and I'm still getting used to saying that. Uh, this today, I want to talk about a uh, different drafting technique. So, I want to apologize for my long absence. There's been an awful lot going on, but I want to go ahead and jump right into the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs here. Okay, so first of all, we want to talk about two drafting techniques woolen and worsted. Okay, so just kind of a basic overview. Woolen yarns, they're airy, they're lofty, uh, they have a lot of fuzz, they're very warm and lightweight, they're traditionally spun from preparations like a Rolag, uh, carded, with a long backward draw which allows the twist to enter into the fiber supply as you pull back. Okay, so when you're spinning on a long draw, uh, the fiber is horizontal to the wheel and the twist enters the fiber at the same time it's being drafted out. In comparison, the worsted yarns are smooth, they're compact, uh, they're sleek, um, and they're spun that way to make whatever the garment or item is long wearing. And you can imagine with all the fibers being wrapped really tightly close together and tucked in that that would not allow for abrasion across the surface of the garment. So that would make them long wearing. Um, it's spun with a short forward draft that allows the twist to enter where the drafting zone that is already drafted. And that's the big key right there. Um, and it's under tension. Sometimes it's called the inchworm method. It's not as fast as a long draw, but it allows you more control to smooth out that fiber. Okay. And because the worsted yarns are smoother, they're usually more consistent. They're strong. Um, they're best used for warps or any yarn where you require that type of smoothness and durability um, in that particular garment. Okay. So let me recap. Basically, when you are drafting a woolen yarn, okay, so here's my fiber, and this is not rolled into a um, roll leg, but uh, let's pretend it is. Okay, so putting this on, and long draw is not one of my particular strengths. Uh, and that's basically just because I don't practice very often, and that's because I don't really have a use for woolen airy light fluffy soft yarns and that's the only reason why uh, i mean if i took more time with it i could master it better so basically here's how this works i'm going to try to do it without resorting to my normal thing is that you are you've attached it to the leader okay you're drafting out and like I said, because this is not um, prepped for woolen, it doesn't flow quite the way woolen prepped yarn should. So I gotta, or fiber should. So I gotta pull that a little bit. Okay, so pinch with your forward hand. Okay, add a little extra twist to it. And then when it's just about right, then you can pull. First, I gotta get the wheel started. So you're supposed to get the wheel started. Okay, pinch, and you're allowing that fiber. I don't know if you can even see me. I'm going to have to move that camera. Okay, so see how I am I am not squeezing the fiber and sliding my hand along. And once I've released it, I'm allowing that to travel up into my fiber supply. And I'm just kind of pulling it along. Let's see if I can push the wheel a little forward and managing in that way. And when you are spinning woolen yarn okay see here i am you don't see me controlling it the way i would worst it and i have to do a little something there and then i'm just freely allowing it and this is why i gotta stop here this is why when you're spinning woolen yarn you really have to have really good prepped fiber okay it's it's in those roll eggs and it's allowing for the smooth drafting okay there we go. Watch me just 
I'm just drafting. It's just coming out nice and smooth and airy. Okay, so now let me pull it back for you, and I want you to have a look at that. Look at how soft that is. Okay, here we go. How f It's fluffy. All right, so, oh, this is a nice one right here. Okay, let me pull that forward so you can see this. Give me a moment. Okay, there we go. Got to find a good focus spot. Look how nice and airy that is. Nice and fluffy. So here we have this nice, fluffy, long-drawn wool. All right, let's make that comparison with worsted, which is my favorite way to spin. And this particular uh, preparation, I want to say this is comb top. Uh, this is a mystery fiber that was given to me. And it looks an awful lot to me based on this staple length. Like this is some type of long wool. I would say that looks like long wool to me. It feels like long wool. It feels like, uh, feels like, uh, not quite like BFL. It might be border luster. It, it has that feeling to it and it looks like that. Okay. So at any rate, this is a comb top. It's a straight preparation. It's not short and carded together and all fluffy like a woolen yarn should be. So this is pretty much really good for what I'm about to do. Okay. And opposed to the, the worsted, I mean the woolen worsted, I am restricting. See here's, I've got a hand right here restricting the twist. And I've also got my finger here and I'm not allowing the twist to travel into the drafting zone until I slide this finger and release it. Okay, so in this case, let's do a short forward. As I'm pulling it forward, I'm sliding my finger back, I'm smoothing it. I am always controlling the twist. I am not allowing it to travel up into the drafting zone at all. And I'm making short backwards draws. Okay, so let me show you that again. Okay, laying it over, pulling it, just inching it forward and it's pinched and then I'm just releasing it as I slide forward. It's only going as far as this hand allows. When this hand comes back, it pinches, it pulls forward, it pinches, it's smoothing it and it's restricting how far it's going into the um, drafting zone or I should say into the supply. So let's pull this out. And this is not too bad. Let me see if I can get a little bit more in there. Okay, now I'm going to pull this out. Okay, so well, that's actually quite a bit. Okay. We're going to pull this back out. Oh, that broke off. Well, now you can really see the difference because it broke off. And so. Okay, same fiber. Mm. Okay, I want to really get a good spot where you can really see it nicely. Oh, that's a good spot. Yes, there we go. Okay, so you have this. Let me try to put that to the camera. Versus this. Ooh, almost had it. And it's not the thickness I want you to look at, but I guess I, it kind of is too. Because this is puffy. It's much, it was much easier to control the thickness um, with it as uh, worsted than it is woolen. And it's just smaller, it's smoother and it's thinner. Okay, that's, here we go. Camera wants to self-adjust. I don't really care much for that. Okay, anyway, so that's a, that's a good comparison. So you can really see how compact this one is and how this one is not. Okay, so basically that's woolen versus worsted. You decide which fiber you want or what yarn results you want, which draft you want to use based on um, what you're creating and just kind of how you like to spin. 
My default spin, like I said, is almost always worsted. I like smooth yarns. I like compact yarns. I make a lot of things that need to be able to handle wear, uh, like warps and things like that. So that's what I do a lot of. I don't make a lot of uh, lofty, spongy things. Okay, now, this is how you spin on the fold. If you've ever heard anyone say that, and it's used a lot of times when you have longer wools like this. Like, this is the staple length for this. If I pull this down to its barest, you're going to see that this is a pretty long staple length. So, some people prefer to spin from the fold, which is something we recommend a lot for people spinning long in gore. Okay, so here you are. You fold it one finger over the other, and you just go to the top of where the fold is and draft off of the tip of your finger. This is a great way to spin lace weight yarns with long fibers. And I'm not really pinching in this case because uh, it's just, it really just drafts so smooth. The weight of the, uh, the pull, I should say the pull from the uptake of the wheel is doing pretty much the drafting. I'm just kind of, you know, holding it. So this particular yarn is not going to be super smooth and hard because I'm spinning from the fold. I'm not smoothing it all down like I would if I was inching it, but okay, see, see how nice that was. Okay, so that, that's a thing to do. Um, so there's, there's some troubleshooting here. The book mentions that if you find that you're pulling the fiber from the inside of the lock, which happens sometimes because it should be coming across the top of your finger. If you're doing that, stop spinning, open a folded lock, um, flip it and set out, and then continue spinning from that spot right there. Okay. Um, so pretty much that was basically what you saw was a folded long draw. You didn't see me doing really any pinching. I was just kind of letting the wheel do the work and pulling it back. So like I said, this fiber is not going to be, um, it's nice and thin, but it's not super, super smooth. It should have some nice air into it. It should puff up a little puff up when it, you know, when it does what it does. Oh, that's a nice, look at that right there compared to the end part when I started squeezing it as it got to the end. Okay. All right. Now that's actually a really good comparison between, um, the, woolen and worsted. All right. Now secrets to good joints. Okay. This is one of those things people always ask, how do I join my fiber? And you want to be able to join your fiber so that it's not super duper lumpy. Okay. So here's how I do my joins. And at this point, this is like so automatic now. All right. So I got my fiber here, right? And what you're doing is you go back a few inches and it's better. I've occasionally you have some fibers that are really grippy. You can kind of like take the tip in and go for it. But a lot of times it's better if you just go back a little bit more. All right. And when you're going backwards, you want to make sure that you're not just putting a big lump of fiber over top because you already got some there. So you want to kind of start it out thin here. Okay. So pull that thin. There you go. Or you can also do the untwist which there are some fibers where I have to untwist because they don't grip quite like that. So, but in this case, this one's nice and grippy, so I don't have to untwist. I can simply lay the thinner uh, drafted piece over top of it, okay? Now, I'm spreading it out and I'm going to hold it to build up some twist, okay? Then I'm gonna smooth that start piece over and go and start my drafting. Okay, like I said, if you have you have fibers, there are fibers where you just have to open that up. Okay, where you have to open this up and fold them into each other and hold it and get a little twist in there. And like I said, sometimes the fibers are so grippy, all you have to do is lay that into whatever you have in the drafting zone and go for it. Did you see that? All right, let me try that again. Sometimes you can lay it right into whatever fiber source you have in the drafting zone. It'll pick it up and you can get right into it. And knowing how much to lay over top of it so that it is consistent. See how consistent that is? Um, is the same as 
spinning a consistent yarn or um, learning how to make the yarn thickness that you want. It's all hand and eye coordination. In your mind, you learn that if I want my single to be like this, then I have to lay down about this much in the drafting zone. So when you have a single that is like this, you learn that when you get to your end piece, how much you need to put in that drafting zone or over top of that piece to equal the thickness of the, the uh, yarn before it. And of course, you can always, like if you get a big chunk and you're like, oh, I don't like that, just untwist it, pull it until it is where it needs to go. And then you can spin, or if you get a super real thin patch and you're like, oh, that's terrible. Just pull it off again, lay it over top of that patch, open it if you need to, or however you need to do that, spin it, twist it, and then continue on. And there you go. That is your secret to good joins. And that's basically, that's what it's all about. Okay, the rest of the section talks about how to finish your yarns. And of course, I obviously can't do that because this is what's just a sample spin. So I don't have any yarn to be finished. But here is the conventional wisdom on finishing yarns. First of all, um, when the wool is combed or carded or whatever your prep is, you are straightening the crimp out and you're smoothing it. And if you know anything about curly hair, if you have curly hair, you understand what happens that when you wash and blow dry and comb out your curly hair, you're stretching the curls and the moment the moisture hits it, bam, the curls come back again. So when you stretch out this fiber, which is crimpy when it's raw and you wet it, it is going to snap back into somewhat of its uh, curly, wavy, crimpy condition, okay? So you need to finish the yarn with water and that reactivates the yarn, it fluffs up and it shortens a bit. So if you spun 30 yards of something when you wash it, you're going to get some shrinkage because the curls are going to pull together again. Our strands going to pull together and they're going to curl. Shrinkage, as we call that in the natural hair world. And so you're going to lose some of the length. Okay. And it will uh, bloom. How much bloom it does depends on the type of fiber and the way that you spun it. But it's going to bloom. It's going to fluff up. Okay. So what you want to do when you're counting yardage and to really get the full effect of what the yarn is going to look like, you really want to wash it after you're done. And do yourself a favor, if you haven't tried this yet, measure your yarn before you wash it, measure your yarn after you wash it. Sometimes if you measure your yarn after you've let it rest on the bobbin, or well, if you measure it first, then you let it rest in whatever form you let it rest in. And then you um, measure it thin. You'll still see a change because after it rests, it'll begin to relax into itself. So give that a try if you haven't tried that and check that out. So it does change. You could wind up with quite a bit of shrinkage beginning, um, depending on the fiber. Now, I'm, you may have heard me say that I don't always um, wash my yarns. And that is true. But there's like a big butt, like a huge, gigantic butt. There's like three different butts. Okay, here's the first butt. First of all, I am using fibers that I have already used over and over and over again. So I have a really good idea of the bloom that is going to happen when I wash these fibers. And I'm, I'm spinning them like a formula. I'm spinning them at a, a consistent thickness and um, a consistent style. So I have a fairly good idea of which fibers bloom, how much they are going to bloom. Secondly, a lot of times I am knitting or working 
with something that does not require gauge. So, if I use this yarn without washing, but I've used this fiber and spun it this way multiple times, and I have a pattern that, that does not matter, gauges not really matter, um, then I can knit this without really washing the yarn. And I know how much bloom to expect, which here was pretty much none. Okay. And I know in general how much shrinkage to expect. Um, I wash these gloves, hot wash them with um, hair shampoo. Okay. And considering the fiber that it is, I actually did expect a little more shrinkage, but it didn't shrink as much as I had previously expected, but it did shrink and I kind of wanted more. Maybe I'll be a little more aggressive with it, but I wasn't like unduly surprised. It didn't felt up to, on me on some tiny little ball because I've done this before with this particular fiber in this particular way. So I, I tell I say, take advantage of breed studies. When you do a lot of breed studies, that kind of helps you move things along a bit. But if you are unsure of the fiber, if you've never worked before, if you've never spun it a certain way before, anytime you change, even if you've done it, let's say you've done merino, worsted, now you're going to do it woolen, or you've done it woolen, now you're going to do it worsted. You've changed something in that formula. You really need to test that guy out to see what's going to happen before you use it in a garment and be unpleasantly surprised. So... Yeah, I had that happen with some Jacob because I actually, I use a lot of Jacob all the time and I make all kinds of things with it, but I wove with it, which was different than the other projects that I used. And boy, that bad boy shrank and I was like, ooh, you know? So weaving does something different to things. So now I know, which is why swatching is a wonderful thing to do. So. Um, when I say things about, um, using my yarns without fooling or washing, you kind of have to know under what conditions I'm doing it because I, I don't always do it the same way all the time. Okay. So anyway, I'm past that. Wash the yarn. Be careful how you're washing it. You can't wash Chevy out the same way you can wash Merino. Those fine wools, they do tend to shrink. That's another reason why I love brief studies because you kind of have an idea of, of how you should and, or should not treat the fiber when you're doing certain things. Um, oh, and then the book does go to say that things like long wools with less crimp don't change as much as Merino, which is pretty much what I was just telling you. Um, and then, of course, even if you're using raw wool exactly, um, I, you could scour things like to the end of their life. Uh, but let's say you don't do that. So when you wash them, you also may find that they soften if you didn't super scour it prior to. So I uh, consider that. And of course, every time you wash it with certain wools, you're going to get more bloom. That happens with Angora. Um, it happens with quite a few fibers. They get fuzzier and fuzzier as you wash, which is nice if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, if you're spinning cotton or silk, uh, it is what it is. It's not really going to bloom. It's not going to change much. It's not going to shrink really, uh, cause there's very little crimp in that. Uh, but you still should for the most part wash at the end, but you really have to wash that garment too. All right. Now, uh, I got sidetracked cause I looked at the book but, um, whether you should whack or don't whack is where I was going is, um, something that's can be controversial. Uh, it depends on why you're whacking. If you're whacking to bring out the bloom, then I say, Hey, go ahead and whack. I don't whack because I don't want the garment to bloom till after I have finished knitting or weaving it. And that way, uh, it doesn't interfere with the pattern. I find an Angora is bloomed when I'm using it. It makes me itch. So I want it done afterwards. And I kind of want that new bloom feeling for things I'm selling. 
Um, so I just wait and in order to allow me handling it as I'm working with it to bring out the bloom. So I don't whack. Um, I don't recommend whacking to move the twist along. Uh, and weighing yarn to me is like a big no, no, because you, what you're doing is you're artificially manipulating the yarn. Um, if you have extra twists, the best way to get rid of your extra twists is to stop over twisting your yarn. I know that sounds a little harsh, but it's true. So when you weigh it and whack it to get rid of extra twist, when you re when that yarn dries, it's straighter. When it gets wet again, that extra twist is going to come out. You'll be able to see it in places in your garment. So you'll have to block that garment every time that you wet it. That may not be a problem to you. So if it's not a problem to you, hey, but I would not weigh, whack and weigh a skein that was over twisted, then make something and give it or sell it to somebody on the thought that the twist is gone and it's going to be okay. Uh, no, it will pop up again. So just keep that in consideration. All right. So after you're done washing and all that, you can make a skein with a nitty knotty. And I'm going to skip that part as far as demonstration. Uh, there are some really neat videos about how to use a nitty knotty uh, if you're using that. And actually, I really like the nitty knotties. Even though I have a skein winder now, I still like my nitty knotty. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was the end of chapter one. It took four videos to make chapter one, and I probably could have done more videos, but there are some things I kind of glossed over in the book. But hey, you should have bought the book by now <laughs> or buy the book. It's a really cool book, and it really could take you a lifetime to spin through this entire book. So I encourage you to go get it. And I'm going to try really, really hard to uh, get back into a rhythm here and to try to make um, the video for chapter two in at least the next two weeks. So I could try to average out two videos a month for the Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs so that we could really get into the different types of yarns. And that that's coming soon. We'll be dealing with singles next time. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Happy spinning.